Welcome back folks. So today I'm going to take a closer look at these two little component testers here that I picked up recently. Now this one here, if you recall, um, the display was just flopping off it. Even the display carrier was flopping off it. So I put a little bit of a hot melt glue on the, the pins of the carrier going through there. And I, I put some drops of uh, crazy glue down the sides of the display hoping that I would hold it on. It does, it holds it in place, but you'll see there's some uh, areas here where it got down into the translucent coating over the uh, light panel. It's too bad, but uh, anyway, I needed to do something to hold it in place. And that's how it turned out. It's still usable, it still works. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to mount it to this. I use this uh, orange acrylic stuff. I got huge sheets of it. So I use it for mounting stuff onto. So I'm just gonna kind of mount it on there like that using double-sided sticky tape. Let me get uh, let me get that done, and then we'll get into the testing of the testers. Okay, so we've got this all stuck on there now, and uh, later on I'll put some little uh, I'll put some little rubber feet on it. But for now we'll just get on with the testing. So I'm going to use my little uh, tester testers here. And I got a couple of cables, short cables, and in each one of these I have a, a fairly sturdy lead from a component. So we can just clamp these in and begin our testing. So let's start off with this one here. And let's start off here with ohms. And we'll get to testing it on ohms. I hope we're not getting too much glare there in the camera. Okay, so this is a approximately one ohm resistor here. Now, if these are, if these are uh, these te little tests here are plus or minus five percent of resistors and ten percent of capacitors, it'd be be acceptable. All right, here we go. Now this one does have a nice big screen on it, which is easy to read. Okay, 1.23 ohms. Let's just go down the, the way here. So it's about 20% high. That's not great. Or 15%. 98.8. It's about 12% uh, low there. Nine ninety six. That's a little bit closer. So that's only about three percent off. That's even better. About seven percent off. And at ten meg ohms, it's within ten percent. So uh, you know, ballpark. It's giving ballpark numbers. Let's switch over now to the, uh, the other one. But uh, okay, so 1.20 ohms, so it's a little bit better than this on the low end. Let's keep going up. 101, that's within 1%, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's roughly one, maybe 2%, one and a half in that range. That's about 4% out there. About, about 8%, is it? Yeah. About 6%. So it's uh, it's more accurate than this. This was in the 10% region. This is the you know 1 to 6% region. So this is a more accurate device so far. Uh, let's switch over to capacitors here, see how it does on those. I imagine it's not going to be as close. 28 PF, so it's five picofarads out. It's about 20 percent. Now capacitors are tough to check. I mean, they, they, the capacitance can depend, especially on ceramic capacitors, which these first three are can depend on the voltage applied across them, the frequency that they're being looked at, and all that sort of things enter into how well a capacitor will measure. So this one's a little bit better here. 540 PF, it's coming up 531. 
20 nanofarads coming up as 17 and a half nanofarads. 20 nanofarads out. So that's about, what, 4%. That's pretty close. It's taken a while. And it is pretty good, 1.5 UF out. These three here are all electrolytics. So I do expect them actually to be a little bit closer in. Yeah. 490 UF. Oh, this is good enough for sorting stuff and getting you in the right ballpark. It's way better in order of magnitude. Um, I guess going up along this here, we've, we've seen between 5 and 10% accuracy, which is not bad actually for capacitors. So let's see how this device over here does the capacitors. 26 PF. It's a bit more accurate than that. I want to say 28. So down the low end, it's more accurate. Let's see as it goes up. 514. That's off about 35 PF. That's less than 10%. 17.63. They're very comparable. It's got this one right on. ESR 6.1 ohms. I forgot what that one is. Look. 26.28. This is a uh, seems to be a bit better than this one on the capacitance. Yeah. This one here is much better in capacitance than this one. This one's better on resistance. Let's try diodes next. VF 305 millivolts. Again, it, that depends on how much current they're passing through it. It gives you the junction capacitance as well. And it's being pretty good on capacitance. I'd say it's pretty close. Okay, silicon diode. Now we're into the LEDs. Okay, very close. Very nice, very nice, yeah. It's actually working pretty good. Pretty close, 2.7 versus 2.6. Again, it's current dependent. Okay, not bad, not bad. Let's see how the other one handles the diodes. All right, that's pretty good. It's not cl as close as this one was, but then again, you know, it, it, it depends on the amount of current that's passing through it, so. All right. They're both pretty close though. Yeah, that's pretty close. Good. This one seems to be a bit quicker and it's testing too. Yeah. All right, so they're about the same on the diodes, I would say. Um, I'd like to find some instruction sheet in this because it looks like it has some specific pieces of information here that uh, I don't understand what they mean. I'd put regular diode on there and it doesn't work. But um, let's try some other devices here. We've got this big honking transistor here. I think that is, that's going to need some leads to test that. This one did come with a set of leads. It came with these leads. And I guess I'm going to have to use them with this one to test these bigger devices here. So that's a drawback to this. But then you got to consider the price, right? Okay, yeah, it is a PNP transistor, big power transistor. Gain of 107 at a collector current of one milliamp and the base emitter voltage of 500 millivolts. All right. Let's see what this makes of it over here. So we got one, two, three, that should just go right in up here. You'd have to make up a set of leads of your own for this one. So this is, we don't know what the, the collector current it measured it at, but it's got around about the same gain and it's got a, a much higher VBE, so I imagine it's also got a higher um, higher collector current as well. Okay, on to the next device. This is a good old 2N3055 here. So this one here was a 2N2955, which is the uh, complement of this, the PMP complement. So this should gain of 66 and a forward voltage of 
123 millivolts. All right, let's move over here, see what we get. Gain of 62. Okay, it's giving me IE of 0.52 milliamps and a VBE of 543 millivolts. So again, we don't know the complete parameters under which this one is testing. This gives us a little bit more information as to how it's testing the device. So it's definitely a plus. Uh, it is. Okay, now we're going to look at these MOSFETs here. These ones should be able to plug right in. Okay, this is a in-channel enhancement mode MOSFET, which is correct. It's got a threshold voltage of 3.48 volts, a capacitance of 1.2 nanofires. Ooh, that's big. And an RDS of uh, 0.4 ohms. And I guess that is that at that voltage? No, 609 millivolts across the uh, drain source, right? 610 this time. Okay, let's uh, see what this will do. We've got the voltage threshold is pretty close and the capacitance pretty close. Yeah, but again, we're not getting the voltage across the drain and source, nor are we getting the on resistance. So if it does identify it as the correct device. All right, let's move on to this one here. Actually, I don't know the specs of this one off the top of my head. It should be able to tell me a little bit. Uh, okay, so this one's a much lower voltage threshold on it. So it's a lo logic level device. Capacitance of one narrow farad, and it's a end channel enhancement mode. And the agreement's pretty good. Again, we've got more information here, which is nice to have. We've got here 2N3904, 2N3906, and 2N7000. In what order, I don't know, but we'll find out. So it's a PNP, so this is the 2N3906, gain of 300 to, or 295, forward voltage of 697. Here. Okay, gain of 298, and a forward voltage of 667 millivolts with a 2.7 milliamp collector current. Okay, so this is a this is the 2N7000 threshold voltage of 2.49, 64PF, RDS of 1.6 ohms. That's pretty close to the specifications because I looked them up recently. Okay, I'm going to test it again so that it's it displays its information there a little bit longer so we can compare it over here. Okay, 66 PF versus 63 and a threshold voltage of 2.5 versus 2.49. So yeah, the, on the semiconductors, they seem to agree very well. This one gives a lot more information. Let's summarize so far. I want to, I want to have a look inside this one, but let's summarize so far. This one here, um, you know, you can get it for around about 20 bucks. And uh, I'll leave a link down below. And it comes with these leads. It comes with these, uh, you know, test components here. It comes with a, a USB charging cable. It's got a rechargeable battery. It's n nicely housed. Uh, the only thing is, is, is that the capacitance range on it wasn't the best. So uh, there is that. This one had a better capacitor range. Other than that, they were comparable in testing the different components and came out with basically the same results. This one here on the negative side is you have to use it with a battery. And uh, it, it's got no case. And when it came, I don't know if this one was a, a bad one, a bad example, but the display was falling off it and I had to remedy that. So that's a negative. And uh, it provides a lot less information than this one does. So that's a negative. Now, like I said, it's just around 12 bucks. You can get a case for it, but that brings it up to the price of this one. So I think hands down, this is the winner of the, this little shootout here. And uh, I wouldn't bother with this one at all, unless, you know, you need the bigger screen to be able to see things. But now this one has in it a, um, a AT Mega 328. So it's basically the same MCU that's in an Arduino. Now let's have a look inside this one, see what uh, see what this one's got in it. 
All right. Okay. So tiny little battery here. 3.7 volts, 1.11 watt hours, 300 milliamp hours. Little display module there. It looks like it's soldered in. That's okay. I didn't test the, the infrared function on this. I will when I put it back together again. And uh, yeah, that display falls apart if you don't have a case on it. So we'll pop that back on here. And yeah, they've completely wiped off. This has been ground down quite a bit and I can't tell what it is. But it looks like it might be an AT Mega 328. Um, it does have a programming header here. So you could, I guess, look it up, uh, see if somebody else has done some more work on it. If you ever wanted to reprogram this. All right, let's put it back together again. Okay, we've got a cheap RCA remote control here for cheap RCA TV. RCA are no longer the company they used to be. Like the, there's just somebody owns the rights to the name and they sell it to whoever wants to pay them for it for whatever ridiculous device it's hair selling, but yeah. So I guess that user code there, that would be the code you program in to your universal remotes to get to work with your TV. And these are data codes here. Oh, that's very good. Cool. All right, so uh, that really sways the, the pendulum here. This is a way better deal than this one here. Don't bother with this one, put it out of your mind. If you want to get a good little component tester and you got an extra 20 bucks or so to spend, this would be my bet. Okay, folks, thanks for coming out to join me today and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.